Hello, everyone. All right, hang on. Quiet, quiet on the set, because here we go. Go <laughs> Banyan. and talk show everybody how we doing out there moss man here and we got our usual uh cast of characters here let me introduce everybody real quickly up here in the corner at least in my corner we got my co-host and co-producer of the rock and talk show the one and only sheila conlin how you doing sheila Good. Hello. Looking hello. Good there. Oh, we, we got Stephen Perkins in the other corner, best known for Jane's Addiction, Porno for Pyros, uh, Hellride, a whole bunch of other great bands. Hellride. Infectious right. Grooves. It goes Hellride. on and on and on. <laughs> exactly. And then down here, kitty corner to me, we got the legendary Scotty Page. Scotty Page, Boop. the saxophonist for Pink Floyd and Super <laughs> Tramp and Poto. We got Norwood Fisher right here in the middle. Norwood Fisher, Fishbone, Trulio Disgracious, uh, the Watts Conservatory of Music. Mm -hmm. And of course, we got Derek Day. You can check Derek Day out in his new CD, his new CD, his new single, mm -hmm. Click On Me, that we debuted last week on the show, Derek Day Music, the one and only amazing oh, talent. Yeah. And last but certainly <laughs> not least, the man, the myth, Kenny Olson, Twisted Brown Trucker Band, Kid Rock, Experience Hendrix, and just you know, a, a good, a good dude. I love you. I love y'all. Yeah, Welcome, all you Teddy How's Bear. Everybody doing? Right there. <laughs> God, you, he's the baritone of the bunch. We got, we got ourselves the low baritone. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so how you guys all doing? Uh, before we before we get into that, let's just real quickly thank our last uh, our last mm -hmm. show, our guests. A shout out to Todd Christensen, the owner of the Mint, who joined yep. us. Uh, of course, our very own Derek Day. It was Derek Day Day last show. Thank Day you. Day. We Derek have Vernon Day Day. Reed. And Derek Day. and Thomas, um, who basically worked with Derek on his latest uh, single, Click On Me, which is just freaking epic. Oh, right. And that and, yeah. and and Jeremy's insane. What an insane director with that 3D. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. That, if, you that, that was, if you haven't. Derek, actually, I'm still blown away by how good that was. If you Dude, haven't awesome. seen the video yet, you just need to. Go to YouTube and Google Click On Me or Derek Day and check it out. The video itself is amazing. The song's amazing. The musicianship. Good job. Congratulations. And also, I wanted to say something about Vernon. The first time I heard Vernon read, I thought it was uh, basically John Coltrane on guitar. It was like bebop yeah. saxophone guitar. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, it was so nice to talk to him, but I'm so happy you're working with him because yeah. like all of us... It's great to work with other quality musicians, and it, it really yeah. brought your potential out. So congratulations on that, Vernon's round. Bird, birds and oh, a feather thanks. flock together. Yeah, yeah. Good job, straight up, Kenny. Dude, that, yeah, <laughs> that, he was a, he's just, like all you guys, just a mastermind Jedi master. So it's just so cool to work to learn. Yeah. Norwood. Yeah. Norwood, how you doing, man? What's going on with you? We haven't, like, checked in with you in the last couple shows. You just sort of been hanging hanging what's going on you know my my i've been i've been actually putting a lot of music down lately i've i've, I've actually i've been recording with this young woman named pepper lewis uh putting bass lines on her tracks and i'm i'm uh uh you know still been rocking with beads writing making some things happen over there i'm producing an album uh tdq is is the project and uh uh you know so i'm i'm staying active 
Awesome. Awesome. You know what's All great right. about his bass playing? You have a personality on your instrument. And like yeah. everybody here on the screen today, when you hear the guy play, you know who it is. And <laughs> that's, that's cool. I can't wait to hear what you're working on. And I can't wait to hear your signature on that music. You know, wait that, a minute. That is, and that's, that's, and Trulio Disgracious dropped a single. What? Oh, damn. Uh, Rope and Dope Records. Yeah. Trulio Disgracious song called Who in the Fuck Are You? I'm on that. <laughs> oh, damn. What? I like that hey, song. Hey, real quick, Nor Norwood, Nor Trulio Disgracious, real quickly, how did you get that name? Okay, there is a story to that one. Quick. <laughs> It was because I like, okay, Julio Iglesias, right? I was I was really kind of like, he was off my radar. And all of a sudden, I saw this article in the LA Weekly and it described this guy who, at the time, he was the biggest thing on the planet, sold more records than anybody. And I was just like, how does that happen? And I don't know about it. <laughs> We're on the same record label. So I went, I'd go up to Columbia Records and raid the vault. And I just, and so, you know, I was grabbing records and like, okay, Julio Iglesias, let me check him out. And uh, he, he had done some collaborations and whatnot. Um, um, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty incredible. Uh, like there's a Willie Nelson, Julio Iglesias track. I can't remember the name of it, but he ended up in some pretty awesome places. And so, but I'm, one day I'm up at the record label and I'm taking out some records. I'd done this with Julio Iglesias records several times. And the head of the head secretary of the of the AR department noticed I had he said, Oh, you like Julio Iglesias? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm checking him out. I'm kind of interested in like how a guy like this becomes the like the biggest thing on the planet. And she's like, she's like, yeah, I I like Julio, but he's nasty. I was like, huh? <laughs> he's nasty. He's nasty. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I, like it. I, I remember I remember when you first started, Trulio. That's back when you and I first uh met back. I mean, I remember so, you guys did that Tuesday so, nights so, at the club lingerie. Yeah, let him finish the let him finish the story. How did hey, it happen? So, so Joanne McGetrick, she's passed away. She's an amazing human being. Anyway, Joanne McGetrick looked at me and, and I'm like, well, what, what, what happened with Julio? Why is, she's like, well, I was, I, was, I was talking to Julio and I, was, I had just seen a show and I was like, Julio, how do you keep your voice in such pristine, amazing shape? It's so warm and sounds so full. And he, she said, he looked, she said, he looked at me and he said, I sing as if I am massaging the woman's clitoris in my throat. <laughs> what? God <laughs> damn. I mean, he is truly your disgraceous. That's brilliant. <laughs> it is truly <laughs> disgraceful. <laughs> Oh, it is truly a disgrace. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but my boys don't say that, right? That's a good story. So, oh, so yeah. Oh. Once, once I said it, I'm like, okay, I got to do something with that. Oh my god, I will oh. never forget that. Yeah. Is the is the the video all done for the song? No, no, we haven't even begun. Like, we haven't begun on a video. We did a live stream, third encore, Monsters of Rock. Uh, stage Monsters of Rock Cruises stages is amazing. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, I'll be doing I'll be doing re replaying that on my page periodically, but it's it's actually wisdom level experience, and I uh, think should be coming there soon as well. Absolutely, right. yeah, it's, it's it's an awesome song. I mean, how, how long is the song? I was lucky to know it asked me to play on it. It's well, 10 minutes, unapologetically 10 minutes of like, I'm just a band rocking. Well, I, I've seen you play the song live many times and it's a great song. I can't wait to hear the recorded version of it. I, and we'll have to, uh, we'll share it. Maybe we'll share it, part of it on, on one of these shows. One yeah, of these days. it was, I mean, uh, the song is, the song is of, awesome. 
We need to. They were. I remember, let's, they, yeah. Let's we keep were, rolling. What do we? we need, what do we yeah, got we need next? To quickly. We need to quickly thank our sponsors and do a quick shout out to Lewitt Microphones for hooking yes. us all up with these amazing. Yay. Uh, Good job, Lewitt. Thank I you. rig. Basically, we need to thank them for allowing us to have this interface that allows these microphones to work with our yeah. computers and our cell mm -hmm. phones. I came multimedia. And then, of course, yeah, you know, I, from I the wanted earth. to from the earth. I was going to say they're they're healing people around. Uh, well, you know, North America, hopefully international healing, right? Exactly. So from the earth located now in Long Beach, Santa Ana and Port Wenemi and Missouri and Michigan and lots Damn. of stuff going on. So and also I wanted to say real quick about Lewitt. I think it's time we do a version of Louie Louie. But <laughs> and do a Lewitt Lewitt and, and then okay. see, what, see what we can do with that. <laughs> <laughs> so like we've, that. Been, we've been we've been talking about save our stages the last couple of shows and yep. yes. um, you know we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna continue with that you know we showed a little video but we're gonna show it again because we can and then we're gonna bring in our guests if you haven't seen this this is a quick little video that Stephen Perkins and Derek Day uh oops wrong video hold on there we go minute, the right video. Yeah, don't, That's dark. don't put any small farm animal pornography up <laughs> So this is uh, Neva asking Congress for help. We know that most of the stages across the country, 90, 95 to 98% of them are closed. There's no venues that are rocking or doing any comedy. We got to help. We got to save it. This is part of our culture. This is America. We need to save these stages, man. It's so important. Big right. right. We've, uh, right. We're, we're bringing There's in. Peanut. Oh. Well, let, let you know, oh, before, we do, before we do that, let me just add that too, because we really want to make sure that everybody knows Neva is, is asking Congress for help. Yeah, so yeah. show your support by sending an email to saveourstages.com. And please, please, please help support this. Now let's talk about what's next. We have this gorgeous guy down there. I know him as one of the greatest bass players on the planet Earth and possibly other planets. We're not sure yet. <laughs> His name is Peanut. 30 years of 311, wow. this world has been rocking with us and you, and you guys have done well at least 60 tours in those 30 years. Something like that. Uh, yeah, this I must thought you were be... talking about Norwood. I thought you were talking about <laughs> Norwood for a second. There's a well, we've had some great bass players, I tell you. Um, as a drummer, I try to surround myself with as many great bass players as I possibly can. <laughs> and yeah, you know, knowing that you guys play summer after summer after summer. This last six months must have really just changed your whole lifestyle. I'd like to hear about that. So that's Peanut from 311. And then we have the great Darren Pfeiffer. I know him as a drummer. Some people know him as a gamer. Other people know him as a talk show host. And then he's Canadian. I mean, let's, <laughs> does it, and then he's got a sombrero. I don't know. <laughs> the circle gym. There's Darren Pfeiffer. I might Pfeiffer. be Canadian soon, too. Just saying. <laughs> Buenos tardes. Hello, Senoritas. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Darren. Okay. Hello so, Darren and Peanut. Welcome to the show. It's yes. really awesome to have you guys on the show. Um, Darren, I love your shirt too. Right. Well, let me let me go ahead and introduce our other guest that's coming on. So we have three great <laughs> guests. So Barbara Holiday, who is a great friend of mine. We've worked together for years and years. I think she just told me that her computer restarted, so she may not be coming ready. on just yet. 
But let's see if she's coming back on. Do I continue? Why she's, not? Well, why don't you introduce her and tell us yeah. about who she is? And as soon as she's here, I'll bring her in. We'll bring her in. Right. So yeah. Barbara, badass woman. She's a comedy manager. She's been doing this for years. And she is the co-owner of Flappers Comedy Club and Restaurant in Burbank. And welcome, Barbara. Whenever ah. she's here. <laughs> As soon as she's oh. here, we'll bring her in. Um, Derek, her dog. You guys obviously oh, wait a minute. Oh. Some, someone's alive. Hi, peeps. So, little dog so lips. Peanut, let's get real quick to Peanut. Now that the band has been forced, like everybody else, to put the, the instruments, you know, possibly, I know you guys are booking shows, you know, as, as, it's a drive-in theater, which is brilliant. Yeah, we should have done it 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. It should have been done. <laughs> but so how do you see what like a band like yours who loves touring, the crowd loves seeing you guys year after year, guaranteed crowd. What do you how do you see this unfolding in the next year? Oh, I I don't know. I'm not a I'm not an epidemiologist, but I'm a I'm a bass player and we're trying to do our best, but you don't want to do like um you don't want to do the Sturgis thing, right? You don't want to, you don't want to be one of those bands. So you just got to be patient, keep your distance um, and, and make sure it works out with the, the locals because uh, states are different um, here and there. So, you know, just got to hope for the best. I can't wait to play. I didn't really know how much of a mental like strain this would be on me, not bouncing around in a bus for 40 days, 50 days at a time. And, you know, I'm, I'm so used to it. I didn't know what it was like to not do it. And as I relax physically and my tension increases mentally, uh, it's, it's tough, you know, it's not the easiest thing. So um, I'm trying to collaborate here and there. Um, I'm trying to write more. I'm loving being home with my kids and, uh, and I hate the fires and I wish I could go <laughs> eat at fancy restaurants like I used to. <laughs> and, and as far as the, the friendships in your band, you guys spent so much time together. I love, I look at bands like yours because my band's always had some, some uh, ups and downs as far as work ethic. I look at your band and I see this family, this business, this, uh, and the, the business of art. And comes art, you can take care of your family. I mean, how does, are you guys getting tighter? Is it, is it loosening up the conversation? How's it working there? Oh, it's really loose. We, this is the longest we've ever been apart. Um, pro professionally, we're, we're used to being on top of each other. So if you take that away, we don't really have as much of a foundation as we used to in getting together. And we really need to work on that. Um, I remember here in The Roots uh, would get together once a week and watch a movie and not talk shop at all and how cool that must have been and how many great movies they must mm. have seen. But just to, just to maintain that that casual, why are we doing it? Oh yeah, we're doing it because we like each other kind of thing. So yeah. it's kind of tough. I mean, four out of five of us have kids. Chad's moving to Arizona. It's, oh. it's not the easiest situation, but 30 years in, uh, we can adapt. We'll, we'll find a way. We're working on doing streaming shows as well as the drive-in shows, so you know, whatever, onward we rock. Wait, have you guys actually done the drive-in thing? Or are you no, going to do no, it? No, you, you yeah, I saw you did the backyard thing recently. Yeah, yeah, Beebe's backyard, Fat Mike's, right? Fat Mike's backyard, that was insane. That must have been, that sounds like some high school shit. It was, <laughs> you know what, old school punk rock Which backyard I mean. party, bro. It was <laughs> totally. Oh. But, but Fat Mike, really, he, 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 like, you came in, hand sanitizer, mask, like the best mask that they could pr provide a nice. multitude of. And he paid people to walk around and be like COVID-19 police. Like they weren't, you know, they weren't armed guards or nothing. They were just like, you know, but people who- Put your were, fucking mask on, put your fucking mask on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, if, as, 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 you know, if, 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 you, if you were in the like, behind the scenes backstage ish area you, you they just go like come up you know i'm talking to miles and kyle from slightly stupid mask down here and they're like if you're not gonna have your mask on be at least six feet away from each other and i'm like oh damn it you know 
regulate. Yep. I, I didn't mind. Yeah, yeah. No, so, you gotta do so it. that was he, Fat Mike did a great job, but yeah, I, like we and we did the driving thing. I, I, I think you're gonna love it. I as 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 I as I when once we did it, I'm like, rock and roll tailgate party. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see. You know, you're gonna see if you if you've been to CES the last couple of years. You've seen these automobiles, right? And they're like turned into like complete movie theater freaking things. You can start seeing that being a thing. People like building their, it's like taking your living room to the show, right? Because you can go camp out and a lot of them, you know, we're getting ready to go do one. They allow you to bring out your, your yard, you know, your, your lawn furniture and set it along your car. So it's a total gale, you know, it's like a whole new model, right? It's cool. Yeah. I imagine right. like you go see Cypress Hill and, and you would sit in a hot box all show long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least a little bit. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay. So, so speaking of this, let's move to our Canadian. Darren, are you a real Canadian or were, no. were you a transplant? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tranny. <laughs> a tranny. <laughs> what? Hold on. That's true. Yeah. I'm a tranny. That's yeah. true. Post op. Post op. I also like baseball. Um, and hockey. <laughs> but uh, I'm half Canadian. I, I lived in Canada for 10 years uh, with my first wife and became a citizen. And now I enjoy free healthcare for life. Ha ha. Ah. Who would have thought? Nice. Rub it in. That's awesome. Now, right. when, I th when I think about you, Darren, you always reinvent yourself. Either you love trying new things and challenging yourself, but you always succeed at what you try. And I really, I really love that secret you have. Uh, you don't share it with anybody, but that's okay. Well, but, uh, even before I go any further with this show, I don't know. I want to say, looking at your drum set, if you had any idea on calling me and asking me to be your drum check, forget it. The yeah, answer is no. Same with you, Peanut. Don't have Chad Let, call me. I'm not setting up this shit. Right. Too much stuff. <laughs> let's Way give too much Darren, stuff. Kirk, let's give Darren a proper intro. You started and... Yes. Well, I would love to know really more about where you started because when I met you, you were the drummer for Goldfinger and I'm like in a great fit. But where, what was happening in your life before that? Before that, I lived in Buffalo, New York uh, for many, many, many years. Was in a death metal band that broke up and reformed as Cannibal Corpse. Oh, okay, great. So I have a death metal element in my life. A lot of, uh, and then I moved into like rock and then punk. And, and then I met John Feldman and two we kicked it around la for a couple of years started goldfinger and the rest is history uh, i left the band about five years ago you know personal reasons it's just not a, not a good fit for me i joined uh, punk rock karaoke with members of uh, circle jerks greg hudson he's also in bad nice. religions yeah. uh, randy bradbury from pennywise stan lee from dickies and we had steve soto from adolescence who passed away a couple of years ago and eric melvin from no effects so we go around the world and we have like an 85 90 song set list of punk rock classics and we just get up there and people play and we sing or we play and they sing and yeah yeah i, I know the words to about 90 percent of our songs so if the guy or girl is too hammered i'll jump on the mic and fix it and we've been doing a video a week since the pandemic started and we get some high profile uh some guys and gals on, on it and uh, it's been fun next uh tomorrow we have a video with doug carrion from dag nasty and the descendants singing uh Black minor threat so it's, it's a lot of fun. I love that idea. I mean, I love the whole concept of that karaoke live band thing. That's a great business model. We call it karaoke uh, Corona Oki. There you go. Yeah, you always you always love to be busy. Do you ever put your feet up and hang out on a hammock, or that's not you? No, I don't think I can. I got ADHD. I just can't relax. I got to have a lot of irons in the fire. I got to have a lot of things going on. Even on vacation, I'll have my phone at the beach. I just can't seem to relax. <laughs> like peanut look at him he's chilling like a villain yeah, all the time all so, the time i don't have i don't have irons in the fire right, well, which is which is interesting because you guys okay you're you're managing and dealing with you know all this crazy covid stuff peanut you just told us about it darren you are such the entrepreneur oh my god i mean reading your reading your bio is crazy number one now i, I did say to you you have to meet you in person. I felt like you were that guy that you have to see in person. And I now believe it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. even though we're not in person. Yeah. Um, but now we, we also have Barbara holiday finally was able to join in. And this hey. is another one who is nonstop working, running clubs, running, you know, managing, com uh, manager of comedians, 
And she just does not such <laughs> one badass woman in this business. But Barbara, welcome number one. And then we want to talk to about talk to you about how you're dealing with this right now. <laughs> that sums it up. <laughs> it up perfect. Yeah. Very, very balanced. So for my first words, they're, they're tears. Um, thanks for letting me in. I actually was in early and then you guys weren't ready for me. So I went to the store, grabbed, you know, a couple sodas, came back. So sorry. All right, perfect. <laughs> Here I am. Well, I own a comedy club venue and, and it is not pretty. Uh, we sell three things, uh, booze, food, and comedy. And all three things are against the law right now. So uh, that's not funny. It's not funny at all. Yeah. And I, 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 I do have sure. some very strong opinions about what's happening, but I won't get too political. But I do think <laughs> that comedians are truth tellers and that we are being stifled right now for some reason. Yeah. You so uh, I'm with so you, Carol. It's a little too much. How many, how many comedians do you have on a regular night pre-COVID? Yeah, so I have a 7,000 square foot venue and we have three stages. We have uh, a 200 seat main room, a 60 seat uh, smaller room called the Yoohoo Room and a bar stage that holds about 40 to 60 people. On any given week, we do about we did about 40 shows a week, seven oh. on a Saturday, um, including family friendly shows, uh, two shows in the main room, two shows in the Yoohoo room, open mic shows in the bar. So um, we are screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Any, and you guys, you guys go from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. or you go as late as you possibly can go. Yeah. Yes. So, and we're open seven days. We were open seven days a week. Um, and we've been closed since March 16th. I'll never forget the day I had Hal Sparks booked. And uh, Hal Sparks is amazing. If you haven't seen him perform, please uh, watch him on Zoom. And he's so supportive. But he literally called me that day, I'll never forget, and was just <laughs> like, I have to cancel. And I said, I know. We have to close. So it was a mutual thing, but he said, whatever I can do, I'll do free shows for you forever. And please, I just don't, don't go down and I'll be there for you. And we don't know what's happening. And here we are this. And well, well, if your side of the fence, what do you hear from save our stages? Cause we're artists, we play venues and we play different ones over and over. You've got the same address night after night. It's different. We're, you know, we're a different breed. But we are part of that the machine that makes those clubs run around America. How, how does how does it? Do they reach out to you? Are you? Is there any help in sight for you guys besides what SOS is doing? I no, I haven't heard anything. We have seven thousand comedians in our database, by the way, and they're all you know comedians in general are really just like musicians. You know, it, it's it has not been pretty that when their whole livelihood, they're all moving out of the state now. They're going to where, where anything is open. And just to give you sort of an idea of what we've been up to, because we have a, we're in a huge commercial building. We're in Burbank, downtown Burbank, near the AM. We're in an AMC building and the AMC has been closed. So you can imagine what my rent is and the landlord still uh -huh. wants it. So Everyone says, oh, don't worry about it. They can't kick you out. Well, why do I even want to be there when I can't generate any revenue? So I don't, at this point, who cares? You know what? <laughs> it's not about getting kicked out. It's about not being, it's about literally trying to do business with your hand tied behind your back. That's what it feels like. It's like, yeah. and someone just took a couple million dollars away from me. That's what yeah. happened. It's so interesting why we're not having the conversation. It's so it's so odd to me why we're not having the conversation about the close down and the two together because we have these problems. I mean, a lot of livelihoods are getting smacked right now, right? So you think we'd like figure out like what's the op? What are what are other ways that we can try to figure out how to do this safely and still keep things alive as opposed to shutting things down? Okay, so get this, Scott. You ready for this one? I'm with you and I'm creative and I'm a fighter. So I said, all right, we'll do a drive-in. So we started another company called Park and Laugh. 
And we got all the rights to a drive-in in Burbank, a very famous location, Pickwick Bowl. And we yeah. set, we got approved by the city of Burbank to do comedy outside. Cars drive up. Everyone sits in their car. The stage is safely tucked away. You listen to the comedian on FM radio, just like a drive-in movie. Burbank said yes. And then on the 17th, after all our commitments are signed, paperwork, we're, we're ready to go. The County of Los Angeles redefines live appearance outside at a drive-in. You this can read the insane. It's not That is life. insane. That so is insane. I went to City of Burbank and said, can we just do the movies then? So we were going to start tonight. Guess what they said? You're not approved to do movies. You're approved to do live comedy. Oh no. my God! Okay, that's so, a problem. That's okay. a, this, I mean, that, guys, that's a this is insane. What about comedy, what about comedy movies? <laughs> it's not no way. Way. Go, Absolutely Piper. not. No so way. Don't even think. To, <laughs> traffic wow. hasn't approved us to have a drive-in in a parking lot at a venue that's a bowling alley that's also been vacant for six months and is losing money right and left, and we can rent from them, generate revenue safely. But no comedy. So, no comedy. So, so, so the fact that quick, so Barbara, I, 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 my band went to Ventura to do a, a show. And I know they're doing a drive-in show at the Ventura County Fairgrounds. And I know there's Orange County is firing off live shows. And I, I'm, I believe San Diego County as well. So this is a Los Angeles County problem. So well, is Riverside. So is Riverside County. I'll Riverside. tell you about yeah. I'll tell you about San Diego though. A friend of mine owns a club there called the Comedy Palace, and he opened up in the parking lot and tried to do the comedy safely. And they were in the middle of shows. Taylor Tomlinson was booked there, and they got shut down. The cops came and said no. While well, all these restaurants have outdoor seating and eating, and it's fine, and they can have huge televisions watching football games. But you can't have a human, one person, talking on a microphone, well, telling it, jokes. I just went to did a gig this last weekend. I flew to uh, 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 Philly, right? I had to take two, four planes to get there. It took me 13 hours, first of all, because there's no flights, right? Didn't think anything. The flights were jammed to the max. They were like, you were like this in the plane all the way. And it was really interesting because they said, okay, when we have to abide by COVID now. So when you get off the airplane, you have to get, pile off in six foot in increments. So it took like an hour to get off the plane by the time we did that, which was kind of interesting. But we played a gig. We were actually supposed to play there, but because of COVID, we were in a, in a room over here and the audience at a, inside of the tent was over here. So we could not, they had to pipe our music through a video stream into the thing where they were basically 75 yards away. It's like, are we kidding? But they were, but they were all together in a room like that. Makes they were all together sense. in the tent. Yeah, that's crazy. That makes I, sense. Mean, I mean, this is, what? This is, something's going on here. I'm well, sorry. Wait, real, to Sheila, you yeah. know a little more about SOS than me. Right. Is SOS just trying to get money in the pockets to owners to keep them alive? Or are they trying right. to figure out how to get back to business with half capacity? How are they looking at the problem? Are they just putting money, which money's great, love money. Okay. And that so pays here, here's, rent. Right. Here's what they're trying to do. Um, they're trying to, all these stages, right? They're trying to figure out what's the next step. And it's going to come down to technology, right? Absolutely. So they're going to try and hand off this technology component that the the venue stages can interact with their artists and the fans or the audience if you will so i think they're coming up with that model which we as thinky xp the rock and talk show are going to be a part of um but in the meantime i know it's 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 fighting congress petitioning congress to to raise the funds to help support that but i know google on the other hand is also going to be supporting that themselves um, I mean, everybody, everybody wants a money. No one wants a handout. We want to work right. for it. We want right. To work and for Barbara money, has, you know? Barbara has a great quote on that. And I'm sure, you know, and, 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 and Darren <laughs> does too, you know, well, you want the handout. I'm but Barbara, <laughs> right. Barbara, what did you say to me? You said, we don't need, I don't, you say it. 
Well, yeah, we, I don't want charity. I I was generating millions of dollars at a venue. And now someone said, you cannot do business in any possible way. Oh, and by the way, you can hire an attorney for some reason who will try to write all these letters and fight this for you. And I had no debt. Now you give me a loan that I didn't need and I owe the government back. For what? I'm not even open. And I owe my landlord full amount of rent. At right, the but what, right, but what you said to me is I'd rather sell a ticket or I'd rather Service. give someone, yes. right. Yes, we, we don't want just to take money. So what we started doing was we're doing shows on Zoom we, we have a regular calendar. We've convinced the comedians to do the performances in Zoom. And we want you to, if someone wants to support us, just buy a ticket, watch a comedy show. You know, um, again, we don't want to do it for free. We want to provide the service we've always provided, which is laughter and lightness and stimulation of endorphins. Well, you <laughs> know, yeah, peanuts in, a, peanuts in a band called 311 they're doing shows coming up very soon, drive-in rock shows. And I'm not sure how far they'll go out of state to do more of them, but there's opportunities, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah, well, well exactly. Go to Arizona. One state. We got California. Hey, but, you hey, know. Bar Barbara, I think there's, yeah, sorry to cut you off, Stephen. I no. think what's going on here with the inconsistency of enforcement is we have no fucking leadership right? The state has to do it themselves. The governors have to do it themselves. Everyone local is just making, making it up as they go along. I think people are really trying to do their best at the local level here in Los Angeles. I mean, at least, you know, but if the, if the, if the infection rate is above 3%, then they're making these rules, right? And it, and it makes sense. It's the science and it's inconsistent because we have zero leadership from the top that's that's my that's well, my two yeah. cents about it the state, Remember, has, the state has to do it right the state has oh to trump, do it. That's trump right. that's we're, we're all on our own right we're on our own well, trump said no businesses have been interrupted by this no businesses have been inconvenienced that's by not true <laughs> he also said biden was trying to get rid of cows okay so that, that's he also that's said windmills cause about. cancer too i uh, threw exactly. my shoe at the television when he what, said I love it. what I, are I, let, let's like what are some possible solutions since yes. we're not, yeah, not damn it david i got a solution yes no, darren, darren, darren 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 what do you got they've gotten testing in canada down to like a minute they had it down to 10 minutes for a little while. It was all the rave, all the news, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, it was like a week. And then now it was then three days and then a day and then 10 minutes. And now they got it down to a minute. It's a machine in Canada that has it down to one minute. It's a what? It's a breathalyzer? Now, if, if you can, I, I haven't read the report, the full report, because it's really, really long. But if you can get it down to a minute, there's nothing that says the technology doesn't exist. Like diabetics can get their blood sugar in five seconds. Right. A little thing, you prick your finger and you go, okay, I need insulin or, oh, I don't need insulin. If you had these devices at a venue, like a, a, a stable center, so, we, so me and Pina can go see the Lakers or, or a hockey. I'm going with you, by the, the way. Or the Palladium uh -huh. so we could go see 311 play a show. Then you prick your finger, the guy goes, yeah, you're COVID free, enjoy it. And then we can go inside and, and, and be shoulder to shoulder and sweat and have sex in the bathroom with strangers like it was before COVID. Exactly. But what I, I totally like that. But what, what happens if all of a sudden people that are pr coming up positive and they're standing in line waiting to go to a show, you don't foresee that kind of rippling bigger and bigger to. Uh, well, if the person's positive, what, what, no, I'm not sure what I'm saying, but I'm if saying the person's that, positive and they're in line. What I mean, that's no different from them going to a bar, watching a football game, like Barbara said, or going out in public and getting groceries. No, but I'm saying, do you think everybody's going to just say, sure, I'm going to turn around and go home? Or they're going to be, they I'm just to. saying, I'm just, I, was told I don't know what, I, what, what it is, but how do you separate that's a tough one, man. positive that starts from negative? That's real human rights, right? Exactly. That like really, well, it. not really, because any place that's a business has the the right to res re reserve service. Right. So, so if they say to somebody, John Doe, Jane Doe, sorry, you have COVID, that person's probably going to go, fuck, I should probably go home and see a doctor. Not, I, 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 by I, human I, rights, I want to see 311. Ah! You know, just, they, I, there there will saying, be those, there will be those for sure that do that. Uh, but I think for the most part, I think you're right. People will, will agree. And I agree. I think that's a part of it is that if we had rapid testing, uh, that was accurate and reliable, 
where people were comfortable and we could, I mean, right now we're checking temperatures and wearing masks when you walk in. Eh, you know, I right. think the masks do right. a lot. I think, I think science proves that if everyone wears a mask, we're not going to be transmitting disease. Okay, that's first and foremost. But how do we get people to think that are already in the mentality that a mask is stupid and it's a hoax to wear a mask? It seems those like people are lost causes. There's nothing you can do. You can't argue it's stupid. I mean, that's well, the those are the, of, that's part of those opening are the people the, worried. Those are the people I'm worried about getting the negative, a positive reading at exactly. a bar and say you can't come into the bar with your four buddies. I'm just saying, I don't know how you get people to follow the law when you start That's, saying they can and cannot come yeah, in with their blood test. It's yeah, get, I don't I know. I like your idea. I want rapid if Barbara testing. Owns, Barbara owns all a have venue, a, what would you do? We all need a breathalyzer and personal breathalyzer that goes green or red, just like a temperature gauge. You can't share the breathalyzer. You got to replace it once in a while. It's got to be instantaneous. I'm green. I'm coming in. I'm red. I'm turning around. I'm with right, you. Right, right. So, I'm so, with you. <laughs> but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's move beyond that. Let's think that that may never happen. So for, for people like Darren and Barbara and P well, Peanut, you guys are performing and, and Barbara has a venue. Yeah. So yeah. so do yeah. we need to go? Do we need to go into more of a technology thing? Yeah, here's what I here's let me throw this in. I believe that we're never going to change now. This this behavior of people being in front of screens like this, hanging out with their friends while they're watering, somebody's cooking and everybody's hanging, everybody's doing this virtual type of movement, right? This is like kind of becoming so it's getting ingrained in people. People are using delivery services now all the time too, because they're just hitting one button push, hit buy and stuff from things. So all this mobility technology, and then you're going to say, well, okay, now we're going to have a different kind of a live experience. So I truly believe that it's going to be a merger. The live event is going to still be a combination of a live event that is basically designed in a way that can be a little COVID friendly, but there is a virtual ticket that comes along with that. So if I get to go to the show, I get to bring five of my virtual friends along with me that are getting to hang out in the room because I have my whole audience, right? So, I mean, this is what we just did. We just played a show. We just did a, did a thing. We're building a thing called Live and Live Think Is, which is really a combination of a, of a live venue, live event tied to a merger of, of, of a virtual experience, but it's really about the two way. It's the interactive part that is the part that changes the game dramatically. But then I also have the ability to, gee, I can't hand you something through the screen, but I can have you something delivered. So you can now add to like, oh, I got a, we're building a party box, which goes with our living event. We got an event, you home it up because I believe people are gonna still sort of cocoon. We're moving from into hives. We've already seen this behavior and COVID has just forced it to happen. What we thought where we would be five years from now, we're basically there now through all this communication. So I personally think it's going to be a, a new business model between the vendors, the artists, the, the, the combination of bringing, having a virtual audience meld with a live experience and then being able to deliver a, uh, a, in a, an interactive experience with the people through the screens and how you can communicate. I want to yeah. say, if I may Barbara. just say something a little bit about what comedy is versus music and mm -hmm. no disrespect at all. I absolutely <laughs> am a huge <laughs> music fan. But music can be a little more of a passive entertainment. So that works great anywhere. Like, in a, even it's not quite the same in virtual, but like you could have the music on and be doing something else. Comedy requires, this is, this is what's strange about comedy. We literally sit people close together on purpose because laughter is contagious. Correct. If people Correct. don't sit close together, they don't laugh as much. Number two, when it's an intimate conversation between a performer, a comedian, and the audience, it's a conversation. It's not an interaction like that it's so you cannot get that same experience in zoom it is a different i agree with you scott See, that but it's the hybrid remember it's what it is is it's the hybrid and i don't think zoom yeah. is the solution. he's talking about a half and a half a and hybrid half, you, you know? still yeah. have your live audience because you need to feel that yeah. that thing but there's a way to bring intimately the people that are on the screen into the live interaction between the artist and whoever happens to be there live so well, it's, we're, it's doing, we're doing we're doing 
we're doing live streaming as well. So like on Saturday night, we'll in the club, we've got the performer live on stage. And then we have about 10 to 20 people in the audience. We can't serve them food or drink or anything. They have, they all have to wear masks and it's technically a production, you know, so. But that's, but that's a linear stream. Are, how can they are bring their own? How are, you <laughs> how are you incorporating? Yeah, they need to bring their own. No, people can, people Good, can I'm come there. People I'll, I'll can be there. Com make comments via the chat and well, then okay. they can, the performer can see it on the screen. And I mean, yes. we've, we've you know seen a few, a few things in comedy where you literally have 20 screens in front of you, but what yeah, is that's this? I'm, I'm sick of the screen. I'm sorry. I think I don't understand that you can go to a drive-in with your car and watch a screen that makes but, no sense. But you can't listen to an acoustic guitar player or right. one person or a comedian, one person on a microphone, but the guy announcing the movie can talk? No, that you makes know, Barbara, no sense. They're doing this at the Mint in Los Angeles on Pico. They're having outside shows. The guitarist is singing into a mic. There's tables all over on the sidewalk. I don't know what the difference between that yes. and comedy is. Don't say anything. Somebody's going to bust it. Trust well, me. We, no we one just, can bust it. Well, we it's, had the yeah, we had the owner Todd on last week. Right. And he was he was talking all about it, how it's worked yeah. and how it has not and what it what it you know, what it needs to be so he doesn't break any laws. But it's you know, he, I like I what, don't know how he's getting away with it cuz I can show you the press release from LA County. And that's the thing well, is it's you, that he's probably in LA City and it's probably different for LA City than it is for LA County. And, and that's the reality. And it sounds like it's a supervisor <clears throat> thing. Like, have you spoken with the supervisor? Or? Oh, oh I'm sure yes. you have. What about doing flapper events? What about doing flapper events somewhere in the city? So that spot flapper presents blah, 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 inside the city limits and not Burbank. What well, why, why do that when we're doing zoom shows all over the world? We have, we're doing comedy online we're doing what we can to survive. I mean, we're also with, remember I have a kitchen. It's an old macaroni grill. It's the size, the kitchen itself is 5,000 square, you know, it's huge. So we're making during the day, we're making meals for seniors out of our kitchen. So we've gone from being a nightclub to being a breakfast club. Nice. That's cool. But, no, but I, I don't want to be in that business. No, no, but I like what Scott is saying. And I've been talking to him about these things that, if the business is uh, as a musician, I used to sell records, then CDs. Now all I do is wonder if anybody streams my music for free. It changes. You can't stop it. Now this technology is in our world. I do drum circles with 50 people on Zoom, but everyone's got a front seat. I can get eyes with everybody. As a drummer, I never get that experience. Exactly. So now I'm front row at all times, and everybody looking at me has got a front row seat. Nothing exactly. is in between. There's no obstacle between where you're standing and how close you want to be to me or anybody you're watching. So there's a magical intimacy we're having that musician, I'm not wanted musician, but maybe a wanted musician gives people this intimate or comedian, this intimate face to face that is not what we like. And it's all digital. It's not real. It's empty. But there's something romantic about what Scott is saying that there's a, there's a change, a renaissance of how we're going to make money, make music, make art with other people, how to monetize it, but not rip them off. I don't want to, I got to play drums in front of people five nights a week. I'm a freaking out, but yeah. well, I think, you know? I think, yeah, I think what, and, and if we can hear from peanut and Darren and Barbara about this, this is something that the rock and talk show that we support hundred percent. How are artists and venues really going to unite to move that's, forward? You know, because it's going to be I a different relationship. Well, on, going, a, I think that's the opportunity. on an opt optimistic note, if, if I may. Yes. As a human species, we have overcome a lot of things and we've overcome pandemics. There's lots of stories in the past about pandemics that have come in and change the world for a spell, but then they eventually do go away, whether it's through natural selection or, or herd um, immunity or herd mentality, as someone, <laughs> someone said, which is hilarious. Talk about vaccine. Somebody. vaccine. Uh, give me a vaccine. Give me a vaccine. Yeah. I'll take or, the fucking or a vaccine. vaccine. Or, or there, Just don't give it to me in two days. I want a little time, more time. A year, year and a half, but it, it's going to happen where we have packed shows at every venue in every city around the world. It's going to happen. I don't know when, but it is going to happen. And, and we're, on the, we're on the precipice of new leadership. 
And that is the first, the very, like Peanut said earlier, no leadership from the top. That's about to change. I don't know where you stand, everyone stands, but it is, it is about to change. And then from there, it's going to trickle down and we'll, we'll be in, in, a, in a new world. But really quick, Barb said something interesting about musicians and comedians being similar. By that, do you mean we all have STDs? <laughs> no. Yes. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> the musician. five. Your tight five is going well. The musicians have the STDs and the comedians talk joke about them. That's the difference. <laughs> Where's the drum roll for that? Yeah, Darren, Darren is always very perceptive, very perceptive, I think. Yeah. But you know, and crude. But, I, I think but Peanut, like, what about Peanut, man? You had the same fans, loyal fans. How many, you know, how many you can play to in North Carolina or, or New Hampshire? You know, because you guys do it every year. So sure. you can deliver it, right? Hand deliver it to them what you guys are doing next. And of course, you can't overcharge people. They're sitting on their couch. But you can give well, them something quite intimate that's face to face. They can even say, hey, can you guys play this song next for me? Sure, Bob from New Jersey. We're doing it for you next. It's something pretty cool that we never had with Jimmy Page or Eddie Van Halen, you know. So maybe there's something there, this super relationship. It's weird. It's distant. But maybe there's some kind of connection that is coming around the corner, like Scott said, that can that bring us together, monetize it, of course, in the right way. But right, well, think of, they'll, pay right, for, but they'll pay to see you and talk to you. you know? Right. Think of our kids. If any of us that have kids, I mean, I have a 21 year old. Everything is all virtual and on the phone. Listen, right. We, we and and I, I used to have to bring my son to live shows to go wow this is amazing or to a comedy show he loved the comedy shows one-on-one -on -one. and music but these kids the next generation they have a different feeling for all of this yeah, they're like this <laughs> yeah exactly and and yeah. and a, that's an opportunity like you're saying there's a way to interact with the musician that's performing right then at that moment and you could be in south africa you could be in fucking antarctica and you could be interacting with the band in real time there's a huge opportunity in that and, and we're looking to what you said we're looking the real to work. use it one way or the other you said the real important thing real time everything is going to real time and actually when 5g hits dude that is like a major game changer of, of, and, of a and lot of Scott's things. and Scott's idea of being able to now deliver something physical to a subscriber potentially maybe it's a more of a regional thing but hey being in the cannabis business goes perfect with music and comedy yeah, no. you know remember it's all about be, experience you can't sell music anymore that gets delivered with as part of a package you're going to get a delivery of you know a CD or a music or a poster or and you know whatever whatever it is that just adds to this new world this new reality that we're all basically yeah. have no choice but to adapt to oh so I, I believe that the well oh, kenny's got kenny's Kenny. got something to say i, did, I was just gonna Kenny. say rock stars and strippers and comedians are people too that's my sensitive side <laughs> right <laughs> above farm animals right right up above lives matter animals. I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, you know, it, Go ahead. It, will, it will all come back around at some point, like Darren said, right? But when it when it does come back around, some of these things will remain. It's like when when as as we were doing things related to the Fishbone uh, Everyday Sunshine documentary, Angelo pointed out that we were connecting to a musical audience. That, that we had, that we didn't know it existed. It was in our blind side. It was people who love music that have zero interest of coming to a live concert. They, they love movies, they love TV, and they don't want to be in a club. They'd rather sit on their couch or go to a movie theater and have an experience. And those people started stepping up and talk to, talking to us in, in the Q and A, as as we were promoting it, and so my thought is, is that is that one, it will all come back. Yep, but, but different. some of these things will. will continue to resonate. That's why, like the rock and roll, uh, rock and roll uh, 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 tailgate party, I think it's gonna be here to stay at the drive-in. I think so too. And, and, and the live stream experience, because kids. Kids are just like, it's another way to experience music. 
they're not they're not so much attached to like well, their memories of what it was like. Yeah. Even that, like even that, right now, they're present yeah. to this. You guys, if you uh, even uh, think about where we're going, I mean, devices now. What there's a company that's got shoes that turn you into a speaker that connects yeah. to the thing. So now you're talking about experience stuff because you can't sell music anymore. That game is over. There's no place to sell music, gone. So you have, what can you sell? The lifestyle, the relationship and the experience. That's what it's gotta be about. So it's combination. So this, and it's, we're at a direct to consumer world now, right? It goes back to uh, Kevin Kelly uh, uh, from Wired, the thousand true fans, true fans, somebody spend $100 a year. If I have 1000, there's my first hundred grand in revenue. Build, it's about this building the small repeatable model and growing it and building that super fan. Because we know the super fan based on data, because we got data now, which is incredible, says basically 3% of your audience is, is your super fan base, two to 3%, and that's 60% of your revenue. So that's the whole game is like, so where is the new business models? And I think this realignment, even if you got a sold out stadium show, if I have a virtual audience, that's just a whole other game. And that two way, that interactive, it's, I right. think this is yeah. one of the you most guys, exciting I'm going to step in here. Seen. Most exciting time I've ever seen. Are we run out of time? I'm going to step in here because we could literally spend <laughs> a very interesting, exciting conversation and we could probably keep it going for another Six months is my guess. Um, I hope not. I typically, hope not. I, and we're not saying goodbye right. yet, so nobody leave. Um, everybody, Darren and Peanut and Barbara, just hang out Go, for Barbara. a moment. Yeah, and, thank, and thank you guys all for coming on the show too. Uh, and 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 we want to just sort of wrap things up at the end of. Uh, are we usually end the show with some kind of musical sort of piece? And we're we're stoked tonight that uh, Mr. Park at Perkins oh, Palace yeah. over there. Oh, He's going to take us out. On his mini drum kit. With, with a little drum <laughs> Sure, But before, before Mr. Perkins or while he's setting up, Darren and Peanut and Barbara, please give us some of anything you need to say and, and where we can find you, where we can follow you on social media. So let's start with Darren. You're up first. I want to just say thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you're right. We could talk for another six hours. Uh, yeah. Hi, Peanut. Hi, Norwood. You guys have been friends and pals of mine for a long time. Uh, register to vote if you haven't. Make sure you vote on November 3rd. Please, 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 people listening. It's very, very important. Uh, the history of the United States, this is the most important vote in the history of our nation. That is not to be underplayed. Uh, but if I want to promote anything, the, check out Punk Rock Karaoke. Uh, Google, just Google Punk Rock Karaoke. Or check out my radio show, which is called The Dangerous Darren Show. It's a podcast I've had for five years running, about a few hundred thousand fans. Wow. Uh, I got a lot wow. of great sponsors and, and uh, I do it's on Adobe radio and iHeartMedia and a lot and Stitcher and Spotify and Apple and it's growing and I'm thinking about moving it to Westwood one. So uh, the dangerous Darren show podcast, check that out and punk rock karaoke and off to my friend over here. That's Mr. Peanut. All right. Thank you, Darren. I threw it to Peanut. Pass. I don't know where you are. Are you over here? Am I over here? I'm, 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 a, I'm above uh, you on my you screen, but whatever. There you yeah, are. Exactly. I just wanted to say to Barbara, like it's it seems really unfair. Like if you're if you're performing outside, like for me, the, the science says that if we're outside, it, it's it's that much safer, right? And you're doing that, then you you should be allowed to do that. So hopefully we can get some consistency in the enforcement. And comedy should be as as legal as restaurants. There's there's no question about it. For for my dollar, there's there's yep. no way. And Tony Hinchcliffe right. needs that, you know, needs that that love back like everybody else does. And I love the guy. Same with Doug Benson. I was just starting to to go to the comedy clubs in LA before everything shut down. I, I really was. Like come like January and February, I was exploring it for the first time, being in the city for 20 plus years and being a huge live comedy fan. I had just always done it on my couch, kind of like Noru was saying like there's there's this contingency that was satisfied with just enjoying it in a personal way so I was just venturing out and I and I feel like the rug was ripped out from beneath me because I was enjoying it so much the first night I went out I was just going to see one act and I went into the smaller room and then I went into the smaller room and it got better and better you know it was incredible you see these underground artists doing their thing just like musicians and it is totally different when you have one person speaking you know, it's a, it's it's not the same. It's not it's not apples and apples. It really isn't. So, but I really do believe that the performance outside should be treated 
totally the same. There, there shouldn't be a difference, especially if the protocols of science are being are being measured and and enforced in some kind of way, you know, without leadership, like I said. But you know, I, I'm Peanut on Twitter. I'm Aaron Wills, uh, Aaron hyphen Wills on Instagram. I'm in the band 311. We've been together for 30 years. In this 30 years, we were supposed to play all 50 motherfucking states, oh. and we got we we're still gonna do that, and we're gonna be doing live streaming coming soon. And it's something that I've been talking about. Ask anyone who knows me for probably about 10 to 12 to possibly 15 years about letting there be access from, like I said, South America to Antarctica. Let's, let's, let's let it happen. You know, let's let everyone be involved. The technology's there. There's a reason why they're not laying telephone wires in Africa. They're giving people cell phones because there's satellites floating around that can give you that connectivity. So let's, let's be a, a huge world nation where we do laugh and perform and cry and sweat and hear these awesome riffs from Norwood that I'm still trying to steal and emulate. And and it's just- Learn because they're impossible. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just, there's so much good in the world. Don't don't let the bastards get you down. We're a liberal nation. Don't let don't let the other side give you know tell you otherwise. It's re it's really just straight up truth. And and yeah, let's laugh a little bit and let's find the place where we can get along, where we don't hate each other because we have different ideas. That's, that's such a shitty thing to be. You know, it it, it makes me it makes me ah, it makes me well crazy. Said. Well, and you, well, you are adorable, it. Peanut. I love your dimples. Let's throw it to Barbara yeah. to close it out, and then we'll get to party. Peanut. Peanut, it's good to see you, brother. Hey, Peanut, been a long Peanut, time. Peanut, you know what? You showed you three eleven showed Fishbone the times of our lives in twenty nineteen by oh. bringing us on the three eleven cruise, and I'm so sad that that cannot sail. It ain't gonna happen again. I, I don't see it happen sense. again. Yeah, yeah, but six it was one of the most beautiful things to, to sail the seas and rock the rock the audiences. My wrist was broken. Oh right, right. I forgot. Oh, it's crazy. I'm so okay, happy you guys, guys came. Right. So good. Yeah, sorry, right. sorry right. for this. We're running out of time. I know. We're going Barbara. out of time. We're gonna Barbara. let Barbara close out, and then we'll let Perkins close out. Okay, so I just want to say thank you for having me and it's it's an honor to be in the presence of such amazing musicians and performers and being a, a prior performer and then now moving to a venue owner. Um, the only thing I, I hate to be a downer on this, but I, if there's fans watching, all I can say is please go to your music, your favorite musician's website, go to Flappers Comedy, that's our website. See what they're doing, what kind of uh, art and performance they're putting out there and buy a ticket for God's sake on Zoom, just something to keep the artists and venues going. I mean, I will probably lose my venue, I'll be honest. There's no way that I can generate the amount of rent that we owed in a 7,000 square foot commercial building in downtown Burbank in Los Angeles. So just, you can add it up folks. I, so it feels like I got my house burned down and now I'm, I'm have to survive and make it work. And normally I'm a very positive person, but I'm running out of positivity. And all I can say is, I don't know, I, you know who to vote for, for God's sake, please. Um, and <laughs> please go and support, like I said, musicians, comedians, buy a ticket to whatever they're doing, even if it's on Zoom. And I don't know where the voice is for politics. I believe me, I know Adam Schiff. He's been in my club. He's done comedy. I've written the letters. I've written the letters to Barger. I, I was on the city of Burbank event planning boards. They all know they gave us an economic redevelopment grant 10 years ago. And we are in the 10th year of making that redevelopment grant um, to prove it worthy. And we did with no fault of our own, we are being shut down. That is my issue. And that I think venues should be compensated. And well, and what that's that a good, that's a, good that? a good transition to, to again, save our stages, Neva calling on Congress to allocate funds just so that clubs like yours can survive and get through this. But on that note, we are running out of time. 
Um, you guys hang out. Don't leave just yet. But thank you, all three of you, for joining us tonight. It was amazing having you. And it was a great conversation. Stephen Perkins, take it away. This is, is going to be a performance of gongs. And it's uh, help us get us through the Thursday night blues. This is called Come With Me. I'm a gong. <laughs> <laughs> what a gong show you are. That was cool. I have, witnessed, I have witnessed a gong show. Stephen Perkins, the one and only. Gonging it up. And you know what, Darren? Darren, you're my John. You're my John Barris. Was that his name, Chuck Barris? Chuck Barris. At Perkins College. Chuck Barris. Well, once Gun again, down the mountain. Once again, I just want to thank everyone. I want to uh, mention our sponsors: Lewitt Mics, iRig. From the Earth, check us out from the earth.com. Uh, I want to thank uh, Darren and Peanut and Barbara. Thank you guys again for thank joining you. us. What a great awesome. show! What a great show! Thank you guys. That was fun. All the co hosts and friends, love you guys. We're gonna kind of close it out. Like, well, we let's make do. sure make sure everybody likes us on YouTube and Facebook. I'm rubbing more with going. Uh, oh, yeah, we well, we totally blew it by not plugging our own social media. We have good luck. It's good luck. We have a YouTube channel, called, and you can find us on YouTube at the Rockin' Talk Show, R O K N Talk Show. And please subscribe to us. Check us out. Help us sort of build the following. And you know what, Darren, have us on your show. Well, come on. Absolutely. 100%. And Nina, you know, you're what? coming on because we're going to talk about your beer. Your I, want to do the, I want to do the punk rock karaoke. What song do you want? We'll learn. Yeah, no doubt. On that <laughs> note, guys, I'm closing us out. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. Good job, guys.